Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just go ahead and add capacitor to our application. Now, if you see in the file structure, you're gonna see we have all the good stuff, but it looks more like an application for the web instead of mobile applications. You see, we cannot really find any Android manifest.json file or any info.plist, which are the required files. Often you will find an applications built for Android and iOS. So how do we add that? How do we make this look like a truly native application? In fact, you need those things to actually work, to actually make it work on mobile phones as well. So there's that. We have discussed what capacitor does. And in fact, it actually allows you to pull off your native, uh, to pull off your Ionic code on native platform as well. It does not really just acts as a bridge, but it actually acts as a bootstrap platform as well, which would bootstrap your Ionic application on your native device. So you need a native code to initialize your application, right? You cannot just, you know, just go ahead and click on app and the web browser would start and your application would run. You need some native code help. Capacitor is that thing for you. Capacitor is going to create that browser widget, cover the whole screen with browser, remove the borders, provide some native integration, integration API, provide some environment variables, all that stuff. So Capacitor does that. Now, it's easy to add Capacitor on your applications. What you have to do is first of all, since we did not create um, our Ionic project like this, what we're gonna do is actually enable the integration now. So I'm gonna go ahead, go back, and I'm gonna say Ionic integrations enable capacitor. C-A-P-A-C-I-T-O-R, just make sure you spell it right. And you can see that it says that integration capacitor is already enabled. Although we did not create our application with the capacitor flag, but it was still enabled because of the version 5, probably because it says that Ionic 1 to 4 is easily installed directly into an Ionic project by default. So anyway, once we have done that, what we want to do is we want to initialize the capacitor. And actually, let me just go ahead and instead of initializing it first, let's just go ahead and add these two platforms, Android and iOS. So let's just go ahead and say npx capacitor add iOS. Now npx, if you do not know, is a tool which allows you to actually um, run binaries directly on your command line. And it says us that we have to build our project first. So let's just go ahead and see in the docs and you can find that it actually says that you have to build your project. Now it's not really, um, you know, you do not really have to build it again and again if you want to make some changes to your code, that's not the case. But for some reason, Capacitor looks for the build in order to, you know, just bootstrap your projects as well. So it's just a one-time one time thing. You do not really have to worry about this a lot. So coming back to the platforms, what this would do is this statement would actually add iOS as a platform, as a capacitor platform to your Ionic application. And once you initialize it, link it, it's going to take care of actually bootstrapping your written HTML, CSS, JavaScript files um, to, this, to this thing, right? So you see that once the build is complete, um, it spits out a nice little folder for us with all the builds and stuff you're gonna find for a regular web app. Nothing like native, right? So what we want now is I want to, oops, I want to say npx gap add iOS, which is going to install, just like it says, iOS dependencies. It's going to create an iOS folder in the root. It's going to initialize that folder with all the required Xcode files so that your application can run and open in Xcode and you can actually run it in an iOS simulator, not in just regular web app, right? So you see that you can actually launch the Xcode as well if you run npx cap open iOS. So let's just go ahead and add uh, npx cap add Android as well so that we can, we can open the project in Android Studio as well. And of course you need um, Android, uh, you know, Java, Android SDK, that must, that thing set up on your systems. So if you do not really have those, I would recommend just Google um, how you can set up Android SDK. If not, just watch the next video where I just sh show you how you can set up Android SDK on your systems. iOS, if you're working on Mac OS, would require Xcode to be installed from the App Store. So there's that. It's pretty simple. So let's just wait for it for a while to just sync everything. And there we are, not a lot of waiting time. So once we have done that, you're gonna see that we get Android 
and iOS folders for us and you see now that we have Android folder with us we have all those nice little files which you would expect in an Android Android uh, application the main activity .java. this is the you know file which would bootstrap our application on the native side and this code would bootstrap our bridge for the Cordova then Cordova would take not really Cordova the capacitor then the capacitor would take over and send our you know index.html file by creating a web view and all that good stuff would happen similarly for iOS as well we're gonna find our um, you know this is the pod file for the for the for the package management and all that stuff we have the info.p list here so you can manage permissions and everything from this file or either xcode so there's that so yeah that's how you're going to add two platforms to your ionic build and that's all for this video in the next one we're going to add some plugins and get started with some real ionic code